So one one night you went to sleep, and the next morning you woke up, and your right eye was just smeary and wee, woozy. And <laughs> whether, sorry, I'm trying to think of the words you no, used. No, no, I mean, I, I struggle even now to describe it. So I'm laughing just because I relate. Yeah. I, well, I kind of imagine a kind of, you know, like a bad contact lens that has sort of gotten really mucked up and yeah. it comes and goes and so on. And what I found like really relatable about your story is your absolute ability immediately to dismiss that anything is going on. Yeah, no, I was in denial for about 24 hours, for sure. Because it was just so hard to fathom. I woke up and nothing looked right. And I mean, I could still see well enough, but, you know, something was wrong. And it just it just didn't compute that I could go to bed and wake up and the world would suddenly look so much fuzzier and et cetera. You know, but then I, I the real whopper was within a matter of days as I saw a succession of doctors and went through all these kinds of eye tests that I never even knew existed before. The real whopper was was I was told about three or four days later, okay, there's a forty percent chance this will happen to your other eye. In which case I would I would be blind. And how do you live with that? But, you know, I mean, I'm talking to you. I mean, you, you, you've had medical news that amounted to we can't tell you what's in your future. You mentioned adversity before. It, it really does force you to ask yourself questions and make psychological adaptations and emotional adjustments that you were never asked to make before and that really kind of test you and help you discover who you are. I mean, that, that's what I hope I wrote about in the book. It's, it's about a medical odyssey in the first quarter of the book and you know, you do follow me along as I have needles stuck in my eye and all sorts of other fun stuff. But I think at the end of the day, it's about something that I think is entirely universal, you, which is when you're dealt a devastating surprise, when you are shown just how, perilous, how perilously close that sword that dangles over us is to you. How do you adjust? What do you do? How do you find optimism and how do you just keep moving forward and making the most and the best of it? You're right. It's about dusk. It's about those first real inklings that the day isn't forever and that light inexorably fades. It's about a rising and then peaking consciousness that you're on borrowed and finite time. It's about a shifting temperature, an altered ambiance. I, uh, the hardest thing I had to wrap my head around in that period of time when I was given that diagnosis and my friend died was, how do I understand my life in the context of his? I am no more worthy and certainly no more significant a soul than my beloved friend. I'm going to live, I don't know how long. Well, this is what happened once I learned I was going to survive. So what does that mean about my life? Do I win a prize? Because I lived for seven decades, let's say, if I'm lucky, rather than three as he did. Obviously, life is not about the number of years you get to tick off. I thought of it again, like life is like having a college career. It's like a four-year thing. No one gets more. It's just how you, how you live those four years that matters. Basically, you were confronted with mortality. But that's, that, that's what your life means in the context of his death. I, what, I mean, what it means is that if you don't relish the good in it, if you don't make the most of it, if you spend your time tallying your misfortunes and what you don't have, rather than kind of embracing and relishing those things that are positive and give you joy and help you make a meaningful contribution, you are, you are dishonoring his life and how early it ended. I am so much better since five years ago when I woke up to this odd vision problem and when I was told I might go blind, I am so much better about appreciating everything good that happens in a given day. I'm so much better about prioritizing what has meaning to me and what I want to do with my time and what brings me joy, because I just appreciate the privilege of being here and of having the faculties I do have when so many don't. 